Today I want to speak with you briefly about what I call God knows you more than you know yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. God knows you more than you know yourself. So, as simple as it is, it is still a struggle because many of our challenges, many of our depressed feelings, many of our eagerness to please people, many of our impressions that we make in life seems to suggest that we are more concerned about people who know us than we are of God who knows us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I believe that if we understand the fact that God knows us, Amen. and there is only so much that we know about ourselves, it will do two things. It will make us humble before Him, number one. And number two, it will give us all the courage it takes to be able to walk in victory in this life. If I know that God knows me, hallelujah. Amen. And I'll pick up just about two or three things and then I'll be out of your way. Number one, God knows you more than you know yourself. Number two, because of that, God knows your weaknesses. God knows your weaknesses. And number three, God knows your strength. Hallelujah. Amen. God knows your strength. If he knows you that much, then certainly he knows your strength. That strength in you that you don't even know that it is embedded in your spirit as a child of God. God knows that capability that is loaded in your eternal spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask for an entrance into your word, O oh God. Speak to us. Even as we bring the bread of life, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're reading from Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 to 6. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 to 6. And I'm speaking on the title, God knows you more than you know yourself. Title, God knows you more than you know yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. It reads, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, O Lord God, behold, I cannot speak. For I am a child. Hallelujah. Amen. Here is Jeremiah. And God's, God has revealed himself to Jeremiah. And is sending Jeremiah to undertake a mission. And now the prophet is giving excuses. Because... He really did not know who he is. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. One thing you want to get in mind that God told Jeremiah here. He says, before I formed thee, I knew thee. Before you were made in the womb, I knew you. That means when you were just a thought in your parents' mind, God knew you. God knew you. Before you were just a clot of blood, God knew you. Before you even showed up in the monitor for them to determine male or female, God knew you. That's how much God knows who you are and who I am. He knew us before we became. Before you ever made your first movement in the womb, God knew you. Before you ever 
made your first cry and your first smile, God knew you. God knew you. Now, we read in Psalm chapter 139. Psalm 139, and I love that reading. Verses 13 through 16. Psalm 139, verse 13 through 16. He says, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully and complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Hallelujah. This is how much God knows you. Amen. Amen. Now, since God knows us this much, isn't it obvious to say that God knows your weaknesses? You know, we try to hide our weaknesses, our, our, our weaknesses. We try to hide them. We only want people to see the good of us. And maybe that's okay. But that's why we are pressured all the time living our lives to impress people. But you cannot impress God. You cannot. Nothing about you surprises God. God knows you. We do the best we can to hide our weaknesses and if we have to cover it up with education. And yes, I have studied to this level of, of, of learning. And we use our academics and our titles to post as if we are up there in the air. But every weakness in you is bare and exposed before God. We use our wealth to hide our weaknesses. The person is so wealthy. And so when his name is mentioned. Or the, the, the person makes a move. And everybody just stands still. And we look at him because he has so much. He has made so much name. And little do we realize. That that person is full of weaknesses. That only God knows. Some of us cover our weaknesses. With our social standing. Do you know I'm the mayor of the city? Do you know I'm an assemblyman? Do you know I am a, a senator? Do you know I am this? And yes, the person has that social standing. Amazing. And it makes others think of him that are safe. Or sometimes he himself is deceived to think that he's up there. And then, meanwhile, he knows very well the inherent weaknesses that he is dealing with. But he has become so consumed by his education, by his wealth, by his social standing, that he is just trying to ignore who he truly is, his weaknesses. God knows your weaknesses. He knows it. You cannot cover it up and try to impress God. No wonder God says, hey, when you come to the altar and you remember that something is not well, something is not sitting right, you better live it and go and settle it with whoever you have to do with before you offer that sacrifice because I know all about you. That's why you cannot hide anything and cover anything and try to use some swelling words to call upon God and make God move. God knows it. God knows it. Hallelujah. Amen. Church, God knows our weaknesses. He knows our weaknesses. In fact, in the book of Psalms, verse chapter Psalm 103, verses 14, he says what? For he knows how weak we are. He remembers that we are only a dust. In fact, one version says, he knows our frame. He knows how we are made. He knows. God knows it. 
Well, somebody would think that that is humbling. And of course, it should be humbling to know that God knows you that much. And not only humbling, that should lead us to fear him. Amen. If I know that God knows me, whether I am inside or I'm outside, whether I'm just trying to impress everybody, but God knows me. God knows what I mean and what I don't mean. God knows who I truly are. Then, it will make me fear him. It will make me open up and be honest. Both to him and to myself. God knows us. Before I formed thee, I knew you. I know you so much that you cannot hide anything from me. Neither is anything about you hidden from me. I know you. Church, doesn't this make us willing to come to God and say, yes, Lord, you know it all. You know it all. And I lay myself at your feet. I humbly come. You know, the human proud, the human arrogant, it's such that when we feel exposed, we get angry. Anytime you feel like you have become, I mean, you have been exposed, you feel you're so vulnerable. You see your world coming down. You see your world crashing because you feel completely humbled. But wouldn't we want to stand before God so exposed? You know, the only way that we can walk in holiness, walk in purity, walk in the fear of God is to ground ourselves in this knowledge that God knows me. Amen. That God knows me. I'm struggling with this, but God knows me. God knows me. It makes me fear. It makes me so humble that when I stand doing anything, thinking anything, attempting anything, I would do that out of the fear that God knows me. God knows me. Hallelujah. Amen. Church, people would do anything to hide their weaknesses. And we may do well as, as far as letting people have a different opinion and different impression of us. But you cannot bring that to God. And now today, Christianity and church has become more of what people see or what people hear. So long as you have the right words to say, so long as you have the right language to, to, to spin around, so long as you have the way to move people's emotion and make people respond and give them that kind of admiration and that kind of impression that is so admirable, that's all they want to know. But who you are, they really don't care. They even don't care about it. And so people have jumped over the honesty before God, the, the sincerity before God, and no wonder we don't see the power of God in the midst of the church today because there's a lot of drama right from pulpit to the pews to everything about the Christian faith. There is a lot of drama. Hallelujah. Church, God knows you. Let that raise your level of fear your level of humility i mean your fear of god your humility before god so that you can walk before him and be perfect that's the calling that god has called us he knows us he knows us now the fact that he knows your weaknesses does not mean that he wants you to become compounded in your weakness but if you can admit that yes this is the weakness and now and God you know that I deal with this weakness that's the only time you can go before God and say God help me God lift me out of this God make this better God let me leave out. let me be able to move out of this strengthen me let me leave past this but unless we make that kind of admission knowing that God knows it and bringing it to him for him to fix us we will live with that weakness we will overlook that weakness 
and we will deprive ourselves of that great and mighty power of God that is ready to flow through us. Hallelujah. Church, God knows us. He wants to build us. But can we admit that yes, Lord, I see this weakness. I see this, this shortfall. I see this limitation. I see this, this destiny in me, Father God. I want to become like you. I want to become like Christ. I want to walk the way you want me to walk. You called me that you will make me to become the kind of person you want me to be. Yes, Lord, I have all these weaknesses, all these struggles, all these challenges, and yes, Lord, you know, and I admit it, Lord, lift me up and out of this situation, of this condition, of this state of life. But we ignore. And in fact, sometimes, as powerful as confession are, you don't even hear confession today. In church, even though the Bible says, if we will confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Believers, in an attempt to impress people, and that's what we do most of, I mean, most of the time, we forget ourselves and we bring it to God. And so when even we are disobedient to God in some way, we still don't want to admit that it is sinful. Oh yeah, I made a mistake. Yeah, I think I... We, we find a nice way to rationalize it and then go, go, go with it because it, it's so depressing to, to think that you're weak. It's so depressing to think that you, 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 you are struggling with this and that you're a sinner and that, uh, I mean, you have this uh, challenge here. And so, you don't hear or you don't See believers truly pouring their heart and their weaknesses before God for God to mend them and fix them and make them strong as can be. But God knows you. You cannot impress him. You cannot. I knew you when you were in the womb. I, knew, I know your frame. I know everything about you. So you don't surprise me. That weakness you have, I know it. I know it. But I'm waiting for you to come and humbly seek help. Would you be willing to come? I know it is there. But have you sought my grace, my mercies to fix it? In as much as you don't admit it, there's little or nothing I can do. Because unless you admit it, you will not be healed. That's why I say, if you come first, if you admit, there's so much I can do. But believers today, the reason why we can live anyhow today is much because we really don't see that God knows our weaknesses. He does. Hallelujah. And just not knowing our weaknesses does not make, I mean, it's not all what God wants to do. Besides the fact that he knows it, what he actually intends is that we will be willing and cooperate with him so he will lift us up and out of that weakness. Amen. And more than that, if he knows your weakness, then certainly he knows your strength. Hallelujah. He knows what you are capable of. He knows what you can do. God knows it. In fact, he knows you more than you know yourself. And when he called Jeremiah, Jeremiah began giving his excuses. I'm too young. I'm too this. I'm too this. For God to call him for that tax, it means that God knows something about this guy that this guy himself doesn't even know. It was the same when he called Moses. For the deliverance of the Israelites from their captivity, he called Moses. And then, Moses was all over the place with excuses. You know, I don't know how to talk. You know, I stammer. You know, I cannot do this. You know, I cannot do this. For God to call you, he knows what you are capable of. 
God knows what you He knows your strength. If he knew you before you were born, when you were in your mother's womb, when you were a clot of blood, if he knew you that much, then you can rest assured that God knows your strength. Hallelujah. He knows what you are capable of. So, among all the people, God called Moses because he knew that he has found himself a man for the tax. When God calls us for a tax, for something to do, for an opportunity to take advantage of, many of us will look the other way and we look at, I don't have education that much. I don't have that kind of family background. There's a guy like that. Gideon. God called Gideon. The Midianite has oppressed the Israelites for years. And God called Gideon that you are the man for the tax to, to take the oppression of the Midianites off of the back of Israel. And I like what Gideon said. It's so interesting. What did Gideon say? Let's read what Gideon said. Gideon said, this is in Judges. Judges chapter 6. Yeah, Judges chapter, I think we're reading from Judges chapter 6 and verses 14. Judges chapter 6 and verses 14. Let's even read from verses 12 through uh, 15. That would be even better. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, O mighty warrior. Then Gideon said, hey, Pardon me, my Lord. Gideon replied, But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about? When they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now, the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hands of the Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you Pardon me, Gideon replied. But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. And I am the least in my family. Hallelujah. That's all the excuses Gideon have. If God is with us, how about all this suffering? If God knows me before I was born, and all through these years, if God knew me that much, then what about all these interviews that I go and I never land a job? How about all this marriage thing moving up and down and nothing is ever working? How about all these finances and the kids running crazy? How about all if God if God knows me? That's just like Gideon talking. In fact, he's, he interrupted the angel and said, Look, look, wait, 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 pardon me. And guess what the angel told her? I thought the angel was going to pour some oil on him and then do some, some kind of uh, uh, gymnastics over, over Gideon for strength to come upon Gideon. None of that. All he said to Gideon, he said, go in this your might. Hallelujah. So the angel knew the power available already resident in Gideon. All the while, Gideon was walking around with the grace, with the anointed, with the strength of God. All the while, God had known him to be a mighty warrior. But Gideon had limited himself because of his family background. His family is Manasseh. It's not one of the popular tribes like Judah, you know, like Benjamin. It's not like some of those tribes. And then, even from that tribe in his father's house, 
His father's line is the weakest in that tribe. These things has gotten into the head of Gideon so much so that he couldn't see any strength in himself. He couldn't see anything better in himself. God knows that you are able. God knows that you are capable. God knows not just the weaknesses in you. He knows the strength in you. He knows that there are certain things only you can do. He knows that there are certain things you have been given the grace to be able to perform, overcome, and succeed in those areas. Don't allow your family situation, your academics, or any situation that you have around you physically to define you. And of course, don't let other people define you too. Amen. God knows what you are capable of. He knows it. So with all the excuses of Jeremiah, of Moses, and of Gideon, God knew that he had found himself somebody, somebody who is capable for the tax. I want you to know that there is something in you, some strength in you, some grace in you that God wants to pull out for your own good, for your own success, for your own advancement. And you cannot allow that failure and that situation and that circumstances to stop you on your tracks. There is so much in you than you realize. God knows the strength in you that you have never tapped into. It is sitting in you. God knows it. In fact, God knows you more than you know yourself. And guess what? In the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 3 verses 20 tells us. Ephesians 3 20 tells us. He says, not, he said, now all glory to God who is able to through his mighty power at work within us. His mighty power at work not in heaven. At work not in bishop. At work not in church. At work within you, the redeemed, the blood but blood washed child of God. The power of God that is at work within you. God knows the deposit that through the cross and the resurrection that he has made in you, that you cannot underrate yourself so much standing in front of a sickness, in front of some demonic activity, and you are running and you are crying and you are begging and you are trying to find somebody with some extra power, somebody with some title to pray when God has vested in you the power of God. Hallelujah. His very mighty power resident in you. Church, God has vested his power in you. His strength in you. And you will never know what God has vested in you until you know him who vested that thing in you. That's why when you wait upon God, the Bible says, for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. When you take the time to meditate on God's word, when you take the time and sit in prayer in the presence of God, when you take the time and allow God to speak to you, strength will come up from within you. There is strength sitting in you, but you are so busy. You are so overwhelmed. You are so, I mean, distracted by other things that you fail to see what is available in you. Hallelujah. Amen. Church, God knows you more than you know yourself. But you need to come to him who knows you that much so that he will remind you. He will redirect your thoughts. He will strengthen your knowledge and your confidence in him. And that what he has placed in you, you can begin to reach out from within you and begin to be at work. Hallelujah. God knows you. God knows that there is power resident in you. 
God knows that he has made his authority, his power available to you. And it is in you and through you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to tell you that God said he knows you. He knows you. And if he knows you that much, then you have to know that until you get to know him who created you and knows you more than you know yourself, you will not be able to tap into that power of God. He knows you so much that he said any weapon formed against you will not prosper. He must know something in you, something about you, something upon you to say that any weapon formed against you will not prosper. He knows you so much to say that, look, you are the head and not the tail. He knows you. He knows you so much that he say you are more than a conqueror. He knows you. He knows you. You are not a zero. Like other people want you to see yourself. Or your own kind of, uh, 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 your own mind wants you to admit about yourself. No, God knows you. He knows that you are the head and never the tail. He knows you that you have a hope and a future. He knows you. He knows you. Church, if God knows us that much, then isn't it right for us to go before God and humbly, humbly, like David said, search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And if there is any sinful way in me, Lead me to the path of everlasting. David was saying, Lord, I know you know me, but I want to stand in your presence exposed, completely exposed. How often do we want to stand before God and willingly lay it all out, expose ourselves before God? And isn't it funny too that even though he knows us, but when we get into his presence, we're trying to find words and find ways to cover up and find ways to excuse ourselves. He knows you. If it's of sin, if it's of weakness, would you be willing, knowing that he knows you anyway, he knows you anyway, would you be humble enough and open up to God and open up to God and he will fix you he will not allow you to become compounded in that weakness. He will fix you. He will lift you up. But it is also true that the grace, the strength of God, the power of God that is resident in you, you will not be able to tap into it until you go before him and say, Lord, you know me. You know where my strength lies that I did not, I mean, I do not even know. Lord, open my eyes. Direct me. Father, order my steps that, Lord, I will be able to take advantage of any grace, of any strength, of any ability that you have placed within me. God wants to use us for the strength, the grace, the abilities that he has placed in us. He wants to use it for his glory. But we will be filled with fear. Filled with all the other distractions. That we will not be able to tap into it. Until we take time to wait upon him. And seek him to, to redirect us. Hallelujah. This morning. I want us to pray. If you need to open up to God, you can dress it up all nines and impress it on people, but not on God. No. He knows you. He knows you. In fact, he knows you more than you know yourself. The same way you can 
Always confer your weakness and always confess your weakness and always sit in your weakness. So much so that you will always consider yourself as zero. You will always think that there is nothing good about you and you are not going anywhere. When there is grace, there is power, there is ability sitting in your eternal spirit that God is waiting for you to tap into it. He knows it is sitting there. We want to pray and ask the Lord, Father, enable me to be able to tap into what you have placed in me. That I will be able to accomplish that which you have called me to do. I want us to pray. And whilst we are praying, if you are listening to me and you don't know the Lord, I want to tell you then you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. Your title might have given you an impression among people. Your social status might have given you an impression among people. But you don't really know who you are. And you will not know who you are until you know the one who knows you and who knows you more than anybody else. And if you will humbly come to him and say, Lord, just as I am, I come. You know all about me, Father. Be it weakness, be it strength. Father, let me live my life for you. Let me walk in you, in your fear. And if you will humbly call upon the name of the Lord, he will not only save you, he will make you rediscover yourself. And you can only do so when you invite him into your life. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask, O oh Lord, that we will cease from all the impressions we make when we know our actual issues, our actual situations, especially when it comes to our weaknesses. Because you know all that there is about us. Enable us to be humble and fear you that Father God we will ask you, invite you to make us right. To make us right through Christ Jesus. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Direct us, O oh Lord, to rediscover the strength the grace, the abilities that you have placed within our eternal spirit. The Lord, we can tap into it and do the tax for which you have called us to do. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.